Super Dave here with another Super Dave review. Super Dave here with another exciting Masterverse review, and this one is an, a Target exclusive Revelation figure. One of the final countdowns. We're still getting them. Prince Adam is supposed to be in a wave coming out, wave 10 possibly. It's exciting to continue to get these figures rounding out the core characters in the Revelation series. And today, this is one I have highly anticipated. Really love the look of him. This is the man at arms that was more of the, um, you know, rejected, cast out, uh, banned from court, from King Randor's court, the castle. Stripped of his position of man at arms, and he's in regular civilian style clothing. Still has that color scheme that we're used to. We can certainly identify him as man at arms very easily. And this is a deluxe character, deluxe figure that uh, Masterverse has given us through a Target exclusive. Not sure if it'll be available anywhere else other than Target. That remains to be seen, but I'm finally excited to get a hold of him. People have been popping up with him all over on Instagram and just got mine in today. And so here he is. Got that cool book in artwork there. And then that awesome artwork on the back. So neat with that cannon on his shoulder. And there he is more in his traditional attire, his armor and some techno going on there. And there is Wave 7. That's right. Uh, we've just covered Wave 8 here on the Super Dave Review Channel. You can go and check that uh, those characters out, but this was these right here are Wave 7. Uh, it's funny because I went to a Target the other day and I said I'm here to pick up a Man at Arms Deluxe character. Gave him the barcode. It said there was some there, limited quantities, and he said, well, it has a street date of uh, the 18th of April, so come back then. Uh, I'm like, really, dude? <laughs> it's like, you know, people are getting them all over the place at Target target stores and uh this is a part of wave seven but based on this anyway but you know it is what it is but here i finally have it in store and here is his bio if you'd like to pause and read that now you can all right let's go ahead and break open this awesome man at arms and check him out and here we are in eternia getting ready to take a look at our second man at arms revelation figure this one in wave seven apparently based on the box is a rendition of him from the revelation series on netflix where he was in civilian clothes after being banished from court and stripped of his title of man at arms and here we find him decked out in a deluxe character set and that's what we're going to look at first is all of his accessories. And first of all, taking a look at Man at Arms hands, he comes with two sets of weapon holding hands and one of them, his left one is a horizontal hinged hand where his other one, his left hand is a vertically hinged hand. So that's cool. He also comes with two balled up tightly fisted hands that are both horizontally hinged. So he comes with two sets of hands. That is so cool. He also comes with this unhelmeted head with that bearded look and the long hair in the back. Really cool with that scarf that's removable as well. And you see the cloth goods cape. And he comes with a second head sculpt, which is this helmeted head still with the beard with a little bit of gray there on the front, as well as the long hair pouring out the back so that is really cool we'll see him equipped with that very soon and he also comes with his regular equipment like his armor that we're used to seeing a little bit different variation of it he has that little blaster that can be attached up here and we'll look at that that is removable it has some features to it as well as a belt that wraps around his waist that is attached to that that is part of the mold so that is really cool looking as well as a boot covers or boot uh, armor there 
it will strap around his boot so that's cool a left and a right and then that big shoulder armor that we saw in the 2000X Mike Young man at arms as well as others and classics so that's really cool with those big spiky metal things on him you know man at arms is a, a, an inventor and definitely a tech kind of guy so it's really you know cool to see some of these features and he does come with a belt and that's removable that has a pouch on it so that's really neat with some of those silver buckle trims really nice touch there and he also comes with a giant cannon and that's really neat it's in a flat gray with some metallic blues and gold and orangish gold there as well as a arm cannon which is really neat it's made of a squishy material and is really neat we saw that in the picture there on the uh, box and I believe he he did use something similar to this in the cartoon so that is really neat we'll see all of this equipped in just a moment as we equip his accessories right now all right here is man at arms decked out with his armor look and his helmeted head I really like that helmeted head look there looks really cool and there he is equipped with that arm blaster of course his shoulder armor there that wraps around his bicep there on his left side and of course you can see there's a, almost a metallic type orange shine to that armor it looks really good you see the the where it uh, straps there underneath on both sides and I had to take off that belt so we could wrap that belt around they both clasp the same way and there's still some silver trim there you can see that just looks really good that tunic style uh, that comes all the way down his back and around splits there on the side looks really good has some fur detail coming around the the edge of the armor like we saw in classics that's something that they added a little bit more detail in this this go around for this man at arms and then you see also that little cannon I haven't used this giant blaster cannon yet but you see this uh, cannon right here and it has a little bit of an articulation and effect here you can move as you see those little doors close them up there or open them up like almost reminds me of the knee little missiles that uh, the bird missiles or whatever that came out of Mandalorian's arm or some of their the Mandalorian's knee those are those little tiny I don't know like missile things but that will clip off it plugs in right there in that hole there and there's a hole in the back that this just pegs in so you can see that just a little closer there and really neat and again opening those up you can see those little areas where I guess you could you know pretend like little missiles or some kind of projectiles come out of that that all right now let me go ahead and strap on his big cannon weapon now before I plug this on I will show you again that that right hand does have a vertical articulation and also notice that they went to a larger peg for the hand kind of like we saw in the 40th anniversary he-man and uh, even the San Diego Comic-Con two-pack with the he-man and the Skeletor he had the larger pegs that pegged in so they may be going in that direction from here on out which would be cool and in fact also giving us vertical hinges would be nice in more of the figures so we've seen that a couple of times now uh, with the he-man and the new adventures he-man so let's go ahead and plug this in and check this out here with this big old cannon piece peg in that big old peg and then that set right over his shoulder kind of do like they did in the picture bring that over here a little bit be nice if we could lean his head just a little bit more but that pretty much works right there I believe there we go you can see how he looks holding his blaster his big old blaster it goes over his shoulder there nicely you see that vertical hinge is working to his advantage to hold that which is nice so that is really 
cool. He's looking neat. Looking really neat. Bravo. Now you see I did not keep his cape on. I fiddled with it and it was just so kind of bunched up around his neck. I wanted to take it off. You can get it on there and work with it. But I was wanting to show you without that hindrance of how he looks all the way around there as well. So that looks cool. Check it out. Really neat. I was trying to find different ones have shown on Instagram that blaster a blast piece coming out. It's not the one that came on the uh, uh, sky jet or jet sled with the uh, Origins Prince Adam. I checked that. That peg is too large to go in this hole, but there's bound to be something around here and I'll check it out and if I find it for the end of the review I'll plug it in and show you. Alright I want to add this right quick because I found the blast piece that goes well with this blaster, this cannon that our Man at Arms comes with and that is the Hordak, uh, Masterverse Hordak blast piece that came with that mechanical arm cannon that he came with that could plug into the end of the hole. It fits perfectly in this piece as well as you can see here and that just looks phenomenal looks excellent that is so cool but yes he is looking cool you can certainly aim up a little higher get that going there looks neat check that out awesome looking good bravo and here is our man at arms giving you a full circle view and I was able to get that cape maneuvered on there. That cape has the tattered edge and it is stiff enough even though it's not wired that you can loop it back and kind of give it the effect like we saw on the back of the box him and him that pose. I just don't have him down on one knee but he is in a stance there and I think it he pulls it off very well. Looks good. Looks good doing it. So there you have Man at Arms completely decked out, ready to go. You see him equipped with all of his accessories, minus the ones with his regular tunic, uh, civilian clothes, belt, and head without the helmet, and then the scarf too, that, that took the scarf off of course. So just looking awesome. So now let's go ahead and look at our Man at Arms articulation all right first of all taking a look at our man at arms in his armor utility here he's gonna be able to look up about that much he's gonna be able to look down all the way that is excellent right there yes really good he's even gonna be able to get a little bit of head pit whoop it popped off there he's gonna be able to get some head pivoting so that's good they get popped off a little bit there and of course side to side there's just a lot of pressure when you do have that cape tucked in there against the head it's going to want to pop off some but uh, you can certainly get it back on there with no problem so you're going to have some options there for that now of course that armor there is going to hinder some but you're still going to be able to get 360 you're still going to be able to go up almost 90 degrees there you're going to be able to get bicep swivel there. Double jointed elbows definitely going to be limited with all of this bunched on. You see how it popped loose there when I was maneuvering it a lot. It's just a strap and it is not buckled. It's, it's molded in on both sides that will go around his bicep to give you that shoulder armor. Looks really neat. I like the way they put that orangish gold part coming off the end look like it's just an extension of the armor that's really nice touch just really like the overall look at at his armor that also gives you a better look at that head sculpt you see how you know and that's of course a non-removable helmet really nice metallic blue and the gear work there going through the helmet like we're used to seeing some version of men at arms helmet and again, just showing you, even with that cape, you can still pop on that little gimmick there very easily. And that looks good too. All right. Of course, that side over here was a horizontally hinged hand, which will swivel. 
and this one over here a vertically hinged hand as we showed you earlier and will of swivel of course and that gives you a better idea of that double jointed elbow just a little better than 90 degrees he's got a pretty good size bicep even under the sleeve there and he'll get just a little better than 90 uh, T pose there looking good of course full swivel there so that looks good even with the tunic around his waist he's still going to get full splits there he's still going to be able to kick up a good amount double jointed knees which look good going to go all the way he does have a boot swivel you're going to be able to get full tiptoes he's going to be able to come up until it hits that guard there when he's fully dressed and of course rocker joints with a peg hole in the bottom so let's go ahead and take off some of this armor and check out some of the differences here and here he is in his full civilian outfit minus the cape just for a, a moment here and you see that he's going to be able to look up with his head that way he's going to be able to look down a good amount just like the other and you can see the head the long hair the man bun here there's some hair that goes down along the side of his right neck area and then as well here and you can kind of maneuver that scarf wherever you would like his ears a lot of detail looking really good overall with that head sculpt I really like it we will take a look at Hordak MX head sculpt that I had already for this version of, of man at arms for head wise anyway to compare during comparisons but you can see how good that looks and it maneuvers very well um, not a whole lot of head pivoting just because of the way the hair bumps up against everything there but still looks really cool looks really nice there's a better look at the back of the head and the man bun how he's got it pulled back and there's just a lot of good detail it looks realistic I'm, I'm thankful that they did go to that extra measure to help out here to make it look realistic and then of course he's going to be able to crunch forward about that much he's going to be able to bend back just slightly there he also gets the ability to go side to side so you're going to have some hula hoop motion there you also be able to turn some at that diaphragm as well as at the waist and so uh, and of course on this side you have a lot more uh, freedom now without the armor on with the bicep swivel and so forth so on so it looks really good I like the way the sleeves are rolled up showing just some of the arm just just a very unique fi figure that's completely different than any of the other figures that we've gotten a completely different mold he just looks really good I really like that belt that he has on just take a look at that again on this version and if I can ever find him an actual physical store target I'm gonna get me another one because in my reviews and in my videos I want to be able to use him in both versions on the fly without having to go through all the trouble of doing uh, all that changing and that's just me because I think this is just such a cool such an awesome figure he's worth to me having two of him uh, just really neat matter of fact I'm just gonna go ahead and say it uh, with this deluxe figure I, I you know I really enjoyed the dark Lynn but I'm just gonna go ahead and call it even with this one with all that he comes with and his mobility and his quality at the price point of like $34 retail I'm gonna give him a 10 out of 10 that's right I'm giving man at arms a 10 out of 10 great job Mattel I mean this is rival rivaling the classics in my opinion to a large degree classics was an, at another level of quality in some areas but what we're getting in just the dynamics and the accessories and the functionality and the articulation here with these figures I mean look at that vertically hinged hand I mean really knocked it out of the park with this one and I'm really liking man at arms this is my favorite man at arms action figure to date and I just think it looks so cool I like the way they did the boot wraps around there so yes just so so cool but you see again that utility belt it doesn't open or anything but it just really looks nice I guess he's got a side fanny pack there <laughs> all right let's now do some comparisons 
All right, I want to first take a look and compare the first Revelation head sculpt with helmet to this second Revelation head sculpt with helmet with the beard. And of course, like we noticed, he has a little bit of gray on the end of that goatee area of the beard. And then, of course, also it looks like the face sculpt is a little different. I like the improvements actually that they made to this face sculpt. The eyes even look a little bit better, I do believe, just slightly. And then the helmet also is just a little different. Yeah, it actually had a flat blue, a little bit of a metallic light blue on the first one, whereas here it's reversed. You have a metallic blue here and a more of a flat light blue going through there. So just a slight difference in the helmets. I do like this helmet better personally. And of course, he did not have any hair hanging out the back of the helmet in the first Revelation release. And he does, isn't that neat, the detail they put in there with that, even the little piece that comes off the side of his uh, head there and on the rest onto his neck and shoulder. Just all of that detail is really cool that they did that with this particular version. Really neat. So you see the helmets there, all right? All right, this is almost an unfair comparison, but hey, we got to do it because this is Mattel's head, which is, I mean, a very good head. It's a decent head sculpt, but there is Horda MX head, and oh man, I think that that's still my favorite. You can see it's a little larger. It just has more of a realism to the eyes, even the beard, even the mouth. The hair doesn't quite come down as long, but you still have the man bun, and it just looks really good. And of course, also he designed me an empty helmet. Of course, that helmet's going to be bigger than the helmets that we just took a look at. It's going to definitely be bigger. You see, it is somewhat bigger than that helmet. But it's interesting to note that Hordak MX helmet is more like the newer helmet. Isn't that interesting? That's cool. So. You can see, I <laughs> almost wonder if if, uh, if Mattel saw his set and inspired this one, but uh, now he does have a little bit of a curl coming off here on the front. There's a detail there. And even the hair is a little bit more detailed, like we said, in the back and on the top. But uh, personally, I like Hordak MX head sculpt better. Just looks more realistic, uh, less toyish. But I like both of them. This one really looks good until you put this one next to it. <laughs> but I love him being able to hold his helmet and do that. And as you can see over here, I had made me a man at arms in civilian clothing by taking one of the soft goods jackets from one of my G.I. Joe Sigma 6 characters and uh, using that Hordak MX head sculpt, same one I just popped off there. But uh, to give him that civilian clothes look, just basically took off his chest armor. But uh, yeah, this one definitely looks good. And while we're at it, we can go ahead and pop that head on here as well. And there we go, I just swapped heads and you can see putting that Hordak MX head sculpt on this new body looks really good. May look just a little large after looking at it the other way, but even putting this one there with the Hordak MX empty helmet there looks cool too, swapping that out. So either way, you can work that, and you can still get those uh, head sculpts from Hordak MX. Find him on Instagram, Jose on Facebook, uh, and he, his company, him, those guys go by Hordak MX, MX, Hordak MX, and so you can find him, and that is just so cool. I love his work, love both of these head sculpts, looks really good. Man, I am just really impressed. He, I mean, just look at there. He looks just awesome. So much better than the first release, in my opinion. I mean, I think even though it's armor that you have to, you know, strap on over other stuff, I think he still just looks so awesome. I love that big, big shoulder pad. I mean, he had a pretty good size one here, but let's look at the detail of the silver and the black and the trim, and then that armor or that blaster, wrist blaster, just really sets things off and his big cannon, and he can hold all of it so well, it just looks intimidating. I think he just looks so good. 
So there you can see how they compare. He only had one armor, which was traditional, you know, with that man at arms look there. One side of his arm armored, one leg armored, and then here he has both both legs or both shins, boots armored. You can see how his chest armor extends downward even over his abdomen, whereas it stops here, which is more classic and traditional looking. But I just really like the way this looks. Really, really awesome. And the cape does set it off. Just looks really good. Looking superb. Awesome. And here is our Man at Arms Deluxe figure next to our San Diego Comic Con two-pack exclusive He-Man with the actual flocked fuzzy loincloth there <laughs> and his metal weapons and more of a metallic armor on his chest as well as our awesome Fisto. He's one of my favorite Masterverse figures as well and they just look great. Love seeing these these powerhouses together. These are definitely important characters in any Motu collection and they just look great together. Looking awesome. Looking really good. And in this comparison, let's relive this scene from the Revelation series where Aldria and our Tila with her dad, Man at Arms, in his civilian clothes there, and then Rabato, and then of course Orko in his kind of uh, tattered clothing back there as well. So you can see them all together, and this looks really awesome. Looking good. <laughs> Looking so cool. So neat. And there's other civilians, different people that were seen in the surrounding village as well in that scene so we'll just leave some of those guys back there <laughs> but this man at arms he is fun enjoying him he's so neat so cool to kind of see this you know fleshed out from remembering the cartoon series that we watched on Netflix and then seeing it come to life here it's just neat you can see that man at arms is pretty tall too and I had left off his utility belt in that last frame that we were uh, filming there. So I went ahead and snapped it on and lined them up here. Just really looks awesome. We'll go ahead and set many faces in this frame here. And uh, I would put the sorceress, but you know, she's not supposed to be outside of Castle Grey Skull, so I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> but uh Thank you so much for joining us for this review. If you've enjoyed it as much as I have, give us a like here at Super Days Review. Subscribe if you've not done so. The subscriptions have slowed down a bit when I took my little break here at Easter. But uh, come on and spread the word and let's continue to grow. Looking forward to reviewing those Silver Hawks very soon. I admit to do those already, but just got behind and I really prioritize these Motu figures and Masterverse figures so and they're worth it so cool but we'll be doing that next God willing and also have some plans in the works for some figures accessories play sets that work well with Motu as well so come back and see us comment if you have something to share and we'll talk with you next time here's some photos in the photo gallery